Howdy hey folks, my name is Mario, the lead developer for the Chaos Recipe Enhancer tool. I'm going to do a quick feature roundup and a very short installation setup guide for y'all ahead of the 3.25 Settlers of Calgar League launch. It's going to be a great one, hopefully the tool will make it even better. Before we get into that, there are some prerequisites for getting our tool installed and set up. Number one is making sure that you have uh, the .NET 8 Windows desktop runtime. Uh, this is something that you're going to have to download, install on your machine before you get set up. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run through that. And then you can go ahead and check out the latest release version. Link is in the README, which is this um, first document that you see on the repository. You can also navigate here on the right hand side. Click directly on the latest release if you'd like. When you're on the latest release page, you're going to look for the setup.msi file that we include. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. And when you go to run the installer, you're going to get a couple of security prompts. We did start signing the installer this league, so hopefully you see less security pr prompts. I'm just going to run through this. There we go, verified the publisher, awesome. And the tool is now installed. Logging into the application after we've gone ahead and installed it is super easy. As of a couple of leagues ago, you're simply gonna click on the login button, log into your POE account, authorize the app, it should reroute directly, and you're good to start using the app and proceed from there. After logging into the app, I've gone ahead and logged in game, and I'm gonna proceed with setting up the absolute bare minimum settings for fetching from my tab to get my set counts. We've done a lot to make sure that the default settings work for pretty much everyone. So you're gonna see here, I'm actually not gonna to have to update a lot. Number one, make sure you're selecting the correct league that you're in. When the new leagues launch, whether it be a private league that you're gonna be in, Calgar SSF, Calgar SC, whatever, this list that you can change will update dynamically. Make sure that um, you don't have to do anything fancy with this. I know a lot of people come on Discord asking, hey, do I have to manually type in the league name? No. We re-added guild stash mode, which is a great way for you to collaborate with your um, team play in case you're going that route for league start. But in this case, I'm just gonna pick from my personal tab. I'll leave everything else just as it is. I have one single set that I'm gonna to try to look for just as the default. We have this nifty feature that allows you to select your tabs from a list that, again, automate, um, dynamically populates. In this case, I'm gonna pick my Chaos Recipe tab right here. And I can run the overlay. And this set tracker overlay pops up on the top left this you can move around to your heart's desire. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here and click fetch. And I can see that I have movement. I have item counts that were populated, uh, certain items faded out, indicating that I no longer need items of that type to complete the number of sets that I've defined. Um, you're gonna notice that some of the jewelry is still showing. We'll get into all the customization for this in a bit, but things like rings are a little bit harder to come by, things like amulets and belts. So I have those as always active, and that's a default. You can tinker with these as you wish, but that is the absolute bare minimum setup uh, to start pulling uh, counts from your, from your stash. We'll get into loot filter manipulation and other features in just a bit. I want to showcase some of the overlay customization features that we've built into the application. And that includes a brief demo of the stash picking functionality. So to start, I will go ahead and fetch and I can see I have one full set in my set tracker, which by the way, is customizable in a couple of ways, uh, ways to modify the way that item counts are displayed, missing or total, or if you just want to hide that entirely, you can do that as well. The actual view for this, is completely customizable with a scale in case you have a larger or smaller monitor and you want to increase or decrease the size of the size feel and look of this set tracker overlay you can lock the position so you aren't able to drag it while you're playing in game 
You can also silence the little warning, this orange text messages that pop up if they annoy you too much. And so I'm gonna leave that as it was. The defaults work pretty well. On the right hand side, the stash tab overlay also has a ton of customization options. When you fetch and have any amount of sets full and ready to be picked, you can actually click this stash button here and the overlay will pop up. This is the stash tracking overlay. You're gonna see a couple of things and, and notice a couple of buttons here. Um, this edit button at the top is for you to resize and drag the grid that appears for stash tab overlay for item picking. I have a larger monitor, I have an ultra wide display, so it's not perfectly lined up uh, based on my current resolution, in which case I do have to drag it to fit the squares. You don't have to be pixel perfect, but it helps to be accurate. And another thing you'll notice is the tabs up here are not fully aligned yet. We allow you the option to change, there we go, the padding, the positioning, the, the width, the, even the horizontal uh, you know, spacing of these tabs to better fit the tabs as they appear in game. So after I've kind of set everything up, uh, by the way, there's a lot of different ways we can modify the way that we pick the items um, and the colors that we're seeing here. You can see the highlight colors, uh, the grid opacity uh, here, if I want it to show up less or more. There's a bunch of ways you can customize this and, and really nifty features here. The tab opacity as well. And I already covered the position of the tabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the default item picker mode set by set. When you change this, you will have to redraw the grid. And now what I see are indicators on the items. And since this is an overlay mode, I can click through. So what I'm gonna do is Control click these items into my tab. And what these dots do is they indicate the most optimal picking order so that you can fit a maximum of two sets in your empty inventory. And I got a notification sound. The stash picking is done. So that was a little overview of the stash picking, the stash track, sorry, the stash tab overlay as well as the set tracker overlay and all the customization options we allow for them. So now that we know some of the really basic functionality of the app, I actually wanna get into maps and start collecting more sets. I've changed my threshold to five, so I'm looking for five sets, still just have the same tab selected. Um, how can I make that easier? Well, I can actually update my loot filter as my set tracker updates, keeping everything in sync, making my life a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all what that looks like. I start by going to the loot filter tab here and I can navigate to the my documents folder. This is my Mario, my account, documents, my games. And in here, I'm gonna be looking for, give me one second, sorry, my discord status. Let me just set this to DND. I'm, it's really important that you're in this directory, the My Games Path of Exile. Do not go into the online filters. This is not where you wanna be. You wanna have local offline filter files loaded here. You can download these raw from NeverSync, from FilterBlade, uh, and have them ready to go for league launch. But a lot of people come into the Discord asking about online filters. Unfortunately, they do not work. You will not get the automated updates. You're gonna have to do it manually. There's only so much I can do <laughs> to make the app uh, abide by you know, all the rules and regulations that GGG imposes and super, super kudos to them and respecting them, allowing us to even have an app like this in the first place. So caveats like that are 100% needed. I'm gonna go ahead and select a very strict filter to be modified. If I hover over, I can see the full path. We do have certain space saving features on by default. I do want to hide like uh, very large two-handed weapons, very large uh, one-handed weapons, you know, like the big axes and such. Um, 
Once that is set, that's pretty much all you need to get going. You can even go into the filter styles editor and we basically ripped the never sync or sorry, the filter blade UI to match what they have going on over there. Beautiful design and figured might as well use it for us. And all of these will reflect in the filter that gets generated by our application. We have the ability to change the text, the border, the background colors of all the item classes, set them to always active, always show on the filter, or always disabled if you really hate weapons, hate seeing weapons. Actually, a lot of people hate seeing body armors, so they like to hide those quite often. Things like the map icon that shows up, you can change all of this stuff. There's even a beam that you can activate. Uh, it's like a beam that shines when you drop a fancy item. You can do things like that. So I'm really proud of this editor. This is new for uh, the Settlers of Calgary patch. Um, we Again, we, we did a lot of thinking for the default, so you shouldn't have to change anything, but you can if you want to. That's a lot of yapping. Let's get into a map. I'm just going to load up a map. Hopefully my build is not bad. And I'm going to move this just a little bit so you can see the full filter. One caveat to the filter manipulation. This requires us to put another button in here, another operation is defined by GGG. Uh, you cannot have multiple operations on the same action by a user. That would be cheating. That would be you know akin to botting or something like that. So what we do is we have this separate button. When you've fetched, and you can see, so everything's updated. I, I had already fetched prior. You have to click the reload filter button. There's a little sound that plays and you should see this pop up in your console. Item filter reloaded successfully. If you see multiple lines, you did something wrong. Uh, you probably have the online filter with the same name. Rename your filter file, you should be good to go. But now I can see, okay, I need helmets, body armors, rings, amulets, belts. So if I start killing stuff, again, hopefully I don't die. Holy, of course I get a, <laughs> a boss in the first two seconds. Look at that. I'm starting to see yellow helmets, yellow bo or, uh, pink body armors, and if, if I continue clearing this map, I'll see the same kind of thing pop up. And it's a really great way just for you to not have to think too much about the act of collecting these sets. And wow, these monsters are very greedy with their, uh, <laughs> with the jewelry. Let's see if I can get any, them to drop any. And I, I got another couple. Oh, I think I saw one over here. There we go. So the rings here that drop. So you might have noticed there was definitely a little bit of clunkiness and a lot of clicking that we need to be doing for fetching, reloading, and such. Uh, again, can't emphasize this enough. So much of that is done on purpose. We understand that the UX in general can be vastly improved, but we want to keep the tool completely legal, which it currently is. You cannot get banned for using this tool. Um, so that's why we have to have the separate operations. One legal way to optimize the whole flow of everything is doing an auto fetch. An auto fetch that uses the client.txt file that the game generates that shows what's going on in chat, basically the chat logs. The chat logs show when you go into a new zone and we can use that information to auto fetch um, when you go to a new map or to your hideout or whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like real quick. For my game installation, I have Path of Exile on my G drive, but you're looking for the client.txt path whether it be uh, Steam or standalone or a custom install location, I have mine set here. You simply go here and you look for this client.txt file. If you try to open the wrong file, uh, the, this won't work and it'll, it'll yell at you. So all you have to do is load that up. You can see here, right now nothing is, is uh, fetched. And if I go ahead and go into a new map, There we go. You can see here, 
it auto fetched. And that's because I have here, you enter Jungle Valley and the game is able to kind of note those changes. So it's a really nifty feature, saves you a couple clicks while retaining the integrity of the application and what it all does. So I'm gonna wrap up this video by just saying there is a lot more depth to the application, a lot of features that were not covered in this video, hotkeys that allow you to really just make the flow a lot easier for yourself, advanced settings enable disable the sounds, the sound levels, languages, uh, more depth to the overlays, more depth and even different recipes like the Regal Orb recipe, um, include identify items for one chaos instead of two, lots of things I didn't go into, but again, I really just want to thank everyone for using the application and I want to give a big shout out to our Discord, uh, Chaos Recipe Enhancer Discord. I'll be sure to post the link to this in the description. It's a really great tool to uh, for users to see, you know, new releases, I ping everyone, uh, and just stay up to date. And if, of course, if you have questions or bug reports or feature requests, very active about maintaining all this here. Uh, very, very, very active community of folks who are willing to help out, especially on a very hectic league launch scenario. It's good to have a couple of eyes on, uh, on the questions that our supporters have. So big thank you to everyone and i hope we have a wonderful 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 3.25 settlers of caliber league many chaos mirrors headhunters and mage bloods to us all thanks exiles